Okay, next I want to talk about sort of all the different possibilities you could um, you could have by taking the span of three vectors in three-dimensional space. And this will really come down to the reduced echelon form of the, the matrix you make. So let me just say if A, if we make the matrix whose columns are V1, uh, V2, and V3, so we'll do stuff like that often to write um, columns sometimes, just maybe I'll make little dotted lines here just to say those are the three columns. Um, but in general, if I write a matrix where the, and I have vectors written, it just means those are each column. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to sort of think about, okay, what could you, what could you um, create with these three columns? And um, so, you know, if you want to make, you could also make sort of a, an, an augmented matrix, uh, something like this with a generic vector Y. And if A reduces to, um, so again, let's, let me just give you some cases. So if A reduces to just the standard um, thing with three pivots, right? So this, I guess, is the case with three pivots. Then that means this system here is always consistent, no matter what Y is, right? So then I could even, re I could even write this as, uh, Sometimes people will write this as something like that, A augmented with Y. Seems kind of strange to put A in the matrix, but hopefully you know what I, what I mean. Um, then uh, this is consistent for all Y. For all vectors Y, which means every vector it doesn't matter where we start with, every vector can be written as a linear combination of V1, V2, and V3. So then in that case, the span of V1, V2, and V3 is all of R3, all of three-dimensional space. Okay, so that if you have three vectors, you can think of this geometrically just by thinking, well, if none of the vectors are coplanar, if the three vectors are not coplanar, sorry. Um, two vectors make a plane in space. You saw the pictures in the last video. And then a third vector outside of that plane will basically get you everywhere, all of space. All right, so that's the first case. And then we can then go but just down by pivots. So like if we do sort of the case with two pivots, here I can think of a couple possibilities. You could think of a, um, you could do something just like this, and then asterisks there, or you could have it go to, um, doesn't really matter where the pivots are, you could have something like this, or you could even have um, a zero vector involved, and I guess you could have a third possibility something like this. All of these are the different staircases, right? You could have sort of the, basically this staircase, this staircase, or even sort of this staircase. Those are all the echelon, or even reduced echelon forms. No matter what though, we saw this, we basically saw this example in the last video, in the example video. Um, Regardless, these span a plane because you basically have two different vectors that point in two different directions. And the third vector, in this case, the third vector is like the linear combination of the first two. That's what we saw in the example. In this case, the second vector would be a multiple of the first vector. Um, and then in this case, you have a zero vector and then two independent vectors that span a plane. So here, so it's certainly not, you know, if we augment with Y, it's not always consistent. Um, but here, um, the span of V1, V2, and V3 is a plane. It's actually a plane through the origin. I, I don't think I um, emphasized that in the last video, but it's some plane through the origin. <laughs> 
So it's a plane in space passing that passes through the origin because the zero vector is always in a span, right? So the span is always going to include the zero vector. So whatever you get is always going to contain the origin. And so if your span is only a plane and it has to contain the origin, then it's a plane through the origin, right? Okay. Okay. And then we can have one pivot. Uh, or let me actually. So put a little box around this conclusion. All right. So then the third case is one pivot. And there's lots of ways that could happen. We could re reduce a matrix and get one pivot, right? A three by three matrix. So we could get, you know, something just like this. Oops. Uh, we're basically the second and third vectors or multiples of the first vector. Or we could get, um, I guess you could have a zero vector and two vectors that are where one's a multiple of the other. Or you could have two zero vectors, I suppose. And then a, a third vector that's not zero and it would re reduce to look like that, right? So these all, all these I'm thinking if you just row, these are possibilities which you could get by row reducing. That's up here and down there and up here too. Okay. And now if everything's a multiple of one vector, I think this should be similar to what we had in 2D, the 2D case where I went through it a little more carefully. But it's, it's gonna be, a, the span's gonna be a line to the origin. You basically can't get off this line. You have a, a vector if you take all you have sort of one vector, you take all scalar multiples of it and you kind of just get a line through the origin, right? So here, the span, again, through the origin though. Is a line through the origin. Same reason as above, it has to go through the origin because zero is always a linear combination of any vector just by scaling them all down to zero. Um, and, you know, there's one more case, <laughs> which is of if, if I sort of stupidly give you the zero vector three times, right, the only way this even happens, and there's no row reduction at all, is just I give you this matrix with all zeros, and the span is just... <laughs> the zero span is just the zero vector. That's all you can create. And so one way to think about this is that, okay, you always get something through the origin, something that's sort of linear, right? Like that's sort of flat, not curvy. You either get a line or a plane or all of space or just the zero vector um, through the origin. So, and you get sort of every possible dimension, which matches the pivots, right? If you have one pivot, you get a one dimensional span, which is this line. If you have two pivots, you get a two dimensional span, which is a plane. If you have no pivots, you get a zero dimensional span, which is just a point. And if you have three pivots, you get all of space, which is three dimensional. So you could say the number of pivots, I guess maybe some takeaways you could have is that, um, you could sort of have a span of every possible dimension. Um, let me I'll just say take away a span of, of each possible dimension. In three dimensional space, you'd have something zero dimensional, one dimensional, two dimensional, or three dimensional. And that the object itself is linear. So that's the first takeaway is that. The second takeaway is that the span is, it's a linear object in the sense that, you know, it's sort of the things made by linear equations. Sort of a line, point, a line, a plane, or all of space. Okay, so now you sort of know if you just take a set of vectors and re reduce, and it doesn't have to be three vectors, you could have two vectors that would make it most a plane. If you take a span of two vectors in space, if you take a span of seven vectors in space, well, it just depends on how many pivots again. There's at most three pivots because there's at most a pivot in each row. They could all just be multiples of each other, so you could still get just a line. So I just picked three vectors here because it sort of gives you all the possibilities. But you could have fewer vectors or more vectors. All right, I think I'll stop.